Whew. A lot of shows came out all in one night, making me panic to figure out what on earth should be the most relevant to watch. I asked my friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr to see which would be the best to review. Surprisingly, I got a lot of votes for Sleepy Hollow, but when the night came around, all I could hear about was Gotham. Funny. To be clear, I am going to be reviewing The Blacklist Season 2. I'm currently catching up. Gotham is on that list, so no spoilers please, and Scorpion will be seen as well. Today's episode is going to be about Sleepy Hollow, but I have a lot of ground to cover before I do. To give you guys a heads up, I did not see the finale of Extant. It really is just a show that doesn't click with me anymore, and I find it pointless to bore myself just to review a finale nobody really wanted to watch. Before the night really got started, I watched The Big Bang Theory, and to be honest, I never had a problem with The Big Bang Theory. It's stupid, it's funny, comical, and really doesn't have much to say beyond that point. If you're a hater of the show, you won't find this opinion valid, but the premiere had its usual setups of situations only these characters can make funny. Of course, there are some hits and misses in the humor, but who am I to judge? Finally, we come to Under the Dome. I never reviewed the first season, let alone mentioned it at all during its second season, and here's why. I never really dug Under the Dome. First season was typically a dry mystery with a lot of first-timers on the screen. The ones that were no strangers to the camera get axed off the first thing and it's just show for the sake of showing how unpredictable the show can be. Nevertheless, Under the Dome Season 1 wasn't really all that it was cracked up to be. Season 2, however, already knew this and decided to shoot its mysteries up with adrenaline. Things are sharper, more focused, gave us more answers that will have more questions. The finale itself, well, let's just say it moves the plot forward and finally unleashes the inner demons of such characters that lead to... well, not much of anything. The survivors under the dome thus far are getting out of the dome, but they're still in the dome. And they give us a cliffhanger saying, See you next year! <sighs> okay, that's it. Which finally brings me to Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow Season 2 Episode 1, This is War. So, just so you guys know, I have actually reviewed season one and i've covered most of the series in general and not necessarily a recap as of what happened in the last episode that lead up to now but if you guys want to check it out it's down below enjoy so quick recap of what happened in sleepy hollow season one finale john noble's character who happens to be a sin eater can't remember the name of him right at this point happens to be the son of ichabod crane and his wife katrina we find that out at the very last minute and he sends Katrina off somewhere by the horseman he she's gone Ichabod Crane is now technically six feet under and then Abby's now in purgatory a lot went down in that episode and it left us on that cliffhanger of what's gonna happen to everybody of course everyone's off in their own little sections trying to figure out how the hell they're gonna get out and thus is where Season 2 comes in. Nevertheless, Season 2 opens exactly where it left off. Now, I can only depart from this in just one way. It did something weird. It did something more than weird because I felt like I looked down, looked back up, and then I felt like I missed something where when it picked up right where it left off, it sent us in a totally different reality between these characters, which is Ichabod Crane and Abby Mills. One's caught in purgatory, one's just being buried alive. However, it shows them together dealing with some sort of mystery that actually forwards the plot just a little bit more. And it was a little weird at first. I had no idea what was going on. None. That was until, minor spoilers, it was all an illusion. Bear with me here, I'm not going to give everything away. But I will say that this episode comes back with a fierce idea in mind and it executes i think pretty well it keeps you on your toes like it did me i look down for a second and look back up and i'm like wait how are these two characters together one's in purgatory one's buried alive how are they together 
It, what? Are they gonna go back and forth? Like, are you gonna see Abby Mills and Ichabod both doing their separate things in two different areas for a couple, a couple of episodes, and then you get a flash forward to a year where they're together and dealing with sort of mystery? I didn't know where it was going. And that's how I felt that this show in general is really picking up on what is interesting about itself, as well as what has been kind of a downfall of the show itself. Season one was good. It was it was all right. It had a good moments, then it also had some not so great moments. Here, this episode was like, bah, 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 bah. yeah! Couldn't catch my breath, honestly. It just kept moving, 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 moving. And a lot of that can be said because they had a lot to tell, and that was good. I loved it. Only thing I could say negatively about this episode as it stands is there's a lot of exposition and a lot of kind of shoehorned in flashbacks with Benjamin Franklin and this key and it was like where does this fit in this timeline with Ichabod? Because Ichabod is like apparently the smartest man of that century that he was a part of to now where not only is he adapting to the 21st century customs, but he's also really well versed in almost everything that he has ever done back in his century. And we keep finding out more, and we keep finding out more, and we keep finding out more, and suddenly this part where this has to do with Benjamin Franklin and the key and the little things that Benjamin did all had become relevant just now. And it's like, you're pushing it. You're pushing it. But that's okay because you are just full of energy, you just have trust in what you are doing, and that is what I love. They're having a ball with it, I can tell. They're just, they're, they're f having fun, and that is what I liked. In fact, it's probably one of the best choices that I made thus far. I think I chose good for Sleepy Hollow. I really dug the hell out of it. And I hope, and I hope, I hope, I hope that it's not always about some separate story to try and set up a world that has already been done in season one. But if they keep it pretty much a straightforward storyline with all the crazy wackiness that's going on, this season's gonna rock. So overall, this episode really does well. It's mostly been about Abigail and Ichabod, not to mention Abigail's sister as well. Some nitpicks here and there, but it's nothing to say that this show really has a good start for its season two run. I'd love to see where it goes next. I like, Extant bored me to tears. Legends, it's okay at this point. I'm just gonna wait to the finale to see where they take me on that, but it is very predictable. So, Sleepy Hollow is kind of a breath of fresh air. So, have you guys seen Sleepy Hollow Season 2, This Is War? I would love to know what you think. I am definitely going to be reviewing the shows that I said earlier. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, please subscribe, like, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, even Tumblr if you wish. All the links are down below. And I'll see you guys sometime this week. Until next time.